We all set to get started. Um, this information session is also being broadcast on Westboro TV and recording by them as well. So you uh, can have the opportunity to rewatch this there and then folks who aren't here have the opportunity to watch it on Westboro TV as well. Um, to begin, uh, let's go over some of the background and context about the plastic bag reduction bylaw, where it came from, how it originated, and what are some of the um, reasons why it was amended in March 2022 town meeting. Um, for this, I'm going to actually kick it over to our town manager, Christy Williams, um, who can share a little bit more context than I have. Okay. Um. So uh, the plastic bag reduction bylaw, which several of you probably remember when that was enacted because it was only a couple years ago, um, we did have a resident come to the select board and ask um, for them to look into this. And so through some meetings, um, we were able to craft the bylaw as it existed prior to this most recent town meeting. Um, the, the amended bylaws, so the amendments, were put forward as a petition article at the most recent town meeting um, by a citizen, and, um, and uh, they actually put forward two bylaws. Uh, one was this one, which amended the plastic bag uh, reduction bylaw to what we'll talk about today, the two, two kind of um, major changes to that bylaw. There is a second um, petition article that I think everyone should sort of be aware of. Um, it did fail at town meeting in that it's not enacted, but it was referred back to the Board of Health um, for future discussion. And so I think that's something that will, um, you know, that you folks would be interested in because it talks about just reducing pla use of plastics, um, specifically at restaurants. Um, for takeout containers. So th there's more to come on that, and that's going to be some more community engagement prior to it going back to town meeting. Um, and so uh, this was enacted, or uh, did pass at the March 2022 town meeting. Um, any bylaw change has to be approved by the Attorney General, and so they've been submitted to the Attorney General, and we're waiting for that approval. Um, we're holding these meetings so that everyone is prepared for it passing, but we definitely want to be clear that um, it's also possible that the Attorney General would not approve some or all of the amendments. And so um, this is really just sort of preparing everyone, answering questions, but understanding that the, the Attorney General does need to approve it. Um, and so we are targeting the June 20th date because that's 90 days past town meeting, and typically by then we would, have, we would hear from the Attorney General. Thanks, Christy. So uh, regarding the overview of changes, there are two critical changes, I think, which may have been communicated to you in a letter and an email um, that uh, derive from the amendment at town meeting this past year. The first is that, as Christy had stated, effective June 20th, 2022, um, the definition for what counts as a reusable check checkout bag under the bylaw has changed. And so previously, reusable checkout bags had a more broad definition, which uh, included things like polyester, polypropylene, cotton, or other durable material, and then durable plastic, um, at least four mils in thickness. Um, now, under the, new, under the changes that have been approved at town meeting, uh, reusable checkout bag is defined specifically as bags with handles specifically designed and manufactured for multiple reuse, and has to be either 100% post-consumer material or biodegradable. And biodegradable is further defined as toxin-free and capable of decomposing, of being decomposed by bacteria or other living organisms. So essentially what's happened is that uh, all reusable checkout bags um, need to be either 100% post-consumer material or biodegradable. Um, and that does include some materials such as cotton um, and 100% you know, recyclable paper bags as well. Um, and to shed a little bit more light on this change, um, we put together this slide that shows, summarizes what's allowed and what's not allowed um, effective June 20th, 2022. Um, so some of the key uh, elements of this are that you know, recyclable paper bags um, are still allowed. 100% um, post-consumer material does include cotton bags and biodegradable bags where they, biodegradable means toxin-free and capable of being decomposed are also allowed. So bags that not are allowed include some bag types that were previously not allowed under the bylaw as well as a few new additions. 
Um, so typically, single-use plastic bags under 4.0 mils in thickness are not allowed, and a lot of the materials that are typically used in those types of bags are listed here. So um, high-density um, polyethylene, low-density polyethylene, linear low-density polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, and polypropylene all tend to fall under that category and are not allowed, nor were they allowed prior to this amendment at town meeting. Um, polyester bags and then durable plastic bags greater than four mils thickness are also not allowed in the bylaw. So I think the long story short here is if you're using bags that are recyclable paper bags or 100% post-consumer material such as cotton, um, you know, you should be in the clear um, in terms of compliance with the bylaw. The other major change which I had alluded to uh, previously is that um, there's now, uh, grocery and retail stores are now required uh, to charge 10 cents uh, for um, checkout bags provided to customers. Previously, under the language um, in the original bylaw, this was an option. It stated that retail and grocery stores may charge uh, for checkout bags from customer, for customers. Now that's actually a requirement. Um, I think an important question to clarify that I've already received multiple times is, well, what happens to the 10 cents? Is that, is that collected by the town or is that something that the stores can keep? The town is not collecting uh, any revenue from the 10 cent fee. Um, it's required that you do charge a fee, but we will not be collecting that and that is you know, for the businesses to keep. Um, Just to jump in, this is the section of the, the bylaw that we're um, you know, in looking at some uh, decisions by the AG and other communities, this is a section of the bylaw that we're, uh, um, you know, really watching to see if it gets approved. So um, in terms of preparedness and things like that for this going into effect, you know, we want to make sure everyone understands it, but we would certainly communicate out if, if, if any of this was not approved. Um, but this is, this is one portion that we're watching. So enforcement, uh, this is a policy that will be enforced by the select board and there is a uh, fee schedule for violations. So on your first offense, um, you will be issued a written warning. On the second offense, a $50 fine. And then third offense and all subsequent offenses, it's a $100 fine. Um, however, uh, you know, we know that this change has happened quickly and that you know, there hasn't been a lot of time for businesses to prepare for a change. Um, you may request an exemption from these changes for up to six months if you have good reasons, such as unique hardship or inventory drawdown. You know, things like, you know, reconfiguring your point of sale system so that you actually have the mechanism to charge for these bags, I imagine would also be a valid reason to request an extension until you can, you know, set up your infrastructure to charge for the bags. Um, inventory drawdown basically means if you have, if you've already purchased, you know, 10,000 plastic bags, you can have up to six months to draw down that existing inventory before you have to, you know, purchase and provide bags that are compliant with the policy. Um, if you would like to request an exemption or if you feel that, you know, you need one, you should reach out to the select board's office either by email or by phone um, in order to initiate that process. And I would strongly encourage you that if you even have the slightest feeling that you might need an exemption to reach out sooner rather than later so that, you know, you can start that earlier and, and you know, not fall into noncompliance. I would just one, so one of the uh, when we when the original bylaw went into effect, there was a six month lead time before anyone was expected to be compliant. Um, with this amendment, there's not that same built in sort of grace period, um, and I think you know given the the hardships that Zach talked about or anything that maybe we're not thinking about, I think it's important to remember that you can cert definitely reach out to the select board's office. Um, you know we want to you know we, we understand uh, how this is you know, something that might take some transition time. And so this, the select board meets the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. Um, in July, we typically only meet once, so that's usually mid-month, but definitely reach out and we'll get you on an agenda for that request. And then lastly, you know, I just want to reiterate, I know that Christy has touched upon this already, um, but, you know, Remember that the amendments to the plastic bag reduction bylaw are pending review from the Attorney General's office. 
Um, and we still have not heard from the Attorney General whether or not um, all, some or all of the amendments um, are consistent with state law. Um, this means that the Attorney General could strike down some or all of the proposed amendments um, within 90 days uh, of the town clerk submitting the bylaw to the Attorney General's office. Um, and therefore, those, those pieces or all of the bylaw potentially would not take effect. Um, so we are doing our best to try and prepare everyone for these changes because we know that there's you know, a lot of logistics that would need to happen in order for your businesses to uh, you know, fall into compliance with the bylaw. Um, but I also want to reiterate that you know, we don't know for certain if all parts of the bylaw are going to be approved by the Attorney General and are consistent with state law. So we're still waiting on that review. That said, you know, it still probably behooves everyone to be as prepared as possible for this change um, because June 20th of 2022 is now just under a month away. Uh, Christy, Jen, do you have anything to add? Uh, we did want to add, uh, Jen just reminded me, sometimes the Attorney General gives themselves gives their office an extension um, in review of bylaws. And so we would, any of that information, any information we get from that office, we'll certainly reach out and, and let people know. Great, and then with that, I know that was a pretty quick presentation and that was the intent. We wanna create time for you all to ask questions or you know, express any comments or concerns you might have. Um, and so you know, we can move into that portion of the session um, right away. So if anybody has any questions, I kindly ask that you raise your hand um, and then please come up to the mic here so that our um, viewers on Westboro TV can hear your questions and our response. Good afternoon. I'm a president, I'm not a business. My name is Dexter Blois, I'm at 23 Deerfield Way. I've got several questions and issues. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend town meeting, so I didn't get the gist of the discussion that went on at town meeting. But if I can ask a couple of questions, or ask a question, get an answer, because uh, that's why I waited. I didn't see any other hands from uh, these folks that may be business people and certainly more uh, affected than I am. Uh, where did this bylaw come from? Was it a petition or was it authored by a town board? Petition. A uh, residential petition? Yes. Interesting. Um, why should I be forced to pay 10 cents for a disposable bag? Uh, right now I get the bags for free. They cut, I go to the grocery store, no matter which one it is, they give me a paper bag or a plastic bag that says recyclable on the bottom or biodegradable on the bottom of it. And I assume that meets the previous bylaw without having to charge me 10 cents. Correct. Uh, that's gonna build up over a period of time. Perhaps I can afford it, but there are some that go to the grocery store to get the basic necessities, and now they gotta pay an extra dime or two or three, depending on how many bags they get, for their paper bags or their plastic bags or their whatever type of bags are distributed. Yeah, so the previous bylaw, um, so the bylaw as it stands without the amendments did have a, a sentence in it that said the grocery or retail store may charge. May charge, may charge. correct. So the, so the new language says um, that they must charge at least 10 cents. And so that did pass at town meetings. Um, and so, I mean, I think the idea behind it was to incentivize uh, folks to, to reuse bags. Um, but you know, as, as you know, uh, because it passed at town meeting, it's something that- you know, I, I understand forward. that, and I, yeah. I, I said right from the forefront that I, unfortunately, I was not able to yeah. attend town meeting. Uh, right. I was watching, but I didn't attend. Yeah. Never mind. Um, what about the, uh, the paper bags or the bags that are distributed by the food pantry? Have we talked about that? Um, that's a great question. And, and I say that because my wife works at the food pantry. We save our paper bags from the grocery stores, fold them up and all, take them to the, and we used to do that with the plastic bags, can't do that anymore and that's fine, but we take the paper bags to the food pantry and they are used to distribute the food to those that are clients of the food pantry. Uh, I think that's a, that's a good question that we should look into. It, it does specify at point of sale and where there's no transaction. You no, know, that's a fine line, Christy. I know. <laughs> yeah, so we'll okay. have to look at that. Uh, I, I just have a concern that, that Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, but it does it does it say nonprofit? Yeah. In, in the bylaw? It already says nonprofit. I'm almost positive I read nonprofit. Okay. Well, then that that would answer it if that's the case, but 
I, I didn't see that in the bylaw. I didn't read the bylaw particularly, but it just it's. Whether or not for profit. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether or not you have to so use that's, the retail facility to consume whether or not for profit, including the amount of retail stores pharmacies. So whether or not for profit. That's so not non-profit then. Non-profit whether or not for profit would be non-profit. That's not for profit. They can't decide that would be non-profit. Can you state where you see that? Whether or not for profit. Yeah, that's not for profit. 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 That
So they come to my store, they get a bag, it's 10 cents. They go to, this says restaurants. So if you pick up something, let's say from the Mandarin or the Toros, where is the 10 cents supposed to be, make me mindful that I'm getting a bag? If I'm ordering to, to go for my family, it's being put in bags. There's no, hey, Atoros, would you mind holding all my food there so I can bring a recycled bag from home that's probably dirty? And please put our food in that so when I, when I get there, we can, sort of, we can square it out so you don't charge me the 10 cent bag fee. But all those things over the week, it's not 10 cents. It's gonna be, is it 50 cents? Is it a dollar? I don't know. Because the way it looks like this was written, every place I go to, is going to be charging the, the consumer 10 cents. It's restaurants. That means like Dunkin' Donuts. It means the cafe. It means any place that I'm getting a bag is now at another 10 cent charge that I'm, that I'm getting. So the, the question I, I do have for you is, is there an option for restaurants? Do I, am I gonna get just charged the 10 cents? Because in a retail store, I can bring my own bag. And I'm gonna point out to everybody here, you have not seen the reusable bags that we get. Uh, I don't have my crew for the, for the most part, we've sort of made it a general rule, they don't bag those. It's up to the consumer to bag their own product if they bring their own bag in. Because some of them will have gone through the ringer. I don't know where the bags have been. I do know where the stuff that we have has been. So um, having people bring in bags is not necessarily a we have the health department here. Not necessarily one of those great things that we're, that we're doing. We deal with this all the time. We do the bottle bill. We've had this discussion. If I came up with the bottle bill on my own, it would never get passed because the health concerns are too great. So I don't know what the mechanism is. I don't know, you know how, this is, how this is going to take effect. I do know that um, this seems a dead and night type thing. I don't, obviously, it's, it's going through. We're, Everybody that, no one that voted for this is gonna to have to deal with it. Everybody who doesn't get to vote for this, such as businesses in town, are now gonna to have to deal with the repercussions. And um, I, I get that the town is trying to be uh, as, as forgiving as they can with this, but I think there needs to be also, we need to maybe discuss of how there is a recourse to get this maybe taken off the books. We, most businesses in town at this point are conscious of green and what we need to do to recycle. We do a lot of stuff at our store to recycle, reuse, and make sure that we're, 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 uh, we're, we're looking forward to any part that we can do. This is poorly written, poorly conceived. There's a lot of holes in it too that I don't think you guys, that maybe they even understand. But well, I guess we'll come to those when we, I guess those are uh, our paths we'll, we'll come to when we, when we cross them. But um, I would like to know what is the rules for people bringing bags into the store? How does that affect, because we're about to expand at Julio's, how does that affect food? And if they can bring bags in for, for us to put food into, uh, restaurants in town would probably want to know the same thing. Um, or are we just charging the 10 cents and you really, it's sort of defeating the purpose of what the bylaw said it was gonna do. So do we know about, uh, I'm looking to the Board of Health, what are we, what are we doing for the, the food part of this? So I do understand exactly what you're saying. I think the best practice would be to let, allow them to bag their own if they're using reusable right. bags. Um, I think that's the goal here is what this gentleman was trying to do is have people use their reuse, reusable bags. Um, it's not a public health issue if they're bringing their food for themselves. Um, so unfortunately, again, your best practice would be to allow them to pack their own. Okay, but what about when somebody orders food at a restaurant, are they being charged the 10 cents? It does state in here that they will be charged. Charged 10, 10 cents. cents, so that would be, you know, I hate to say it, but I, I, to be honest with you, I've never seen, I, I get it, but I've never seen a Roach Brothers a, a Stop and Shop or, or any type of the bags. We do a lot of uh, delivery service, and, and during COVID, I was doing a lot of driving around town, delivering stuff. I've never, I've seen, uh, you know, Dunkin' Donuts 
uh, Dunkin' Donuts cups. I've seen uh, Mc McDonald's uh, food wrappers out there. I've seen uh, scratch tickets out there. I've never seen like a, a Roach Brothers or a, uh, or a Stop and Shop or even one of our bags on the side of the road. So I don't think it's a problem of littering. We're just trying to make people aware, uh, and that's what it says, aware of that. But if you start, if you have situations where they have to pay the 10 cent fee for a bag and there is no alternative, you're starting to understand why this can be a problem. So and I am correct on that though, right? Excuse me? The, the food part, they, they, they're gonna have to pay the 10 cents. There's no way around it. They will have to, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, that's, that's all I have to say to, uh, of that, but um, I, you know, I, I, I think that the town may want to give uh, a six-month hardship all the way around because we're going to have to do new bags. We're going to have to go through our bags because I cannot, in good conscience, charge somebody 10 cents for this. So I have to get rid of a lot of different stuff that we've already carried, and I'm sure everybody else in town is in the same type of situations. You don't buy something for a week's supply, you buy something for month's supply. So um, having this go through within a 90-day period is, um, is unreasonable, and I think maybe the town should look on its own in giving all businesses a hardship and moving this six months down the line. All right, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much, I appreciate your time. Thank you. you. certainly weren't the first one to bring that up about the six months um, because of the supply that they've just ordered. So again, just write to the select board and. Yeah, but I think the t I think that I think the town needs to give all the businesses that sort of uh, because um, even our POS system, we're not going to be able to to get people. I don't think everybody understands that there is a not only is there um, a shortage on uh, uh, of supply chain, there's also a shortage of help. We're having a meeting here today at five o'clock. I had a scheduled guys in that's not necessarily their time to be here to be at this meeting. Most of the other businesses in town with, with very little help can't be at this meeting, okay? And it also goes to like programming computers and, 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 and making sure your POS system can actually track this properly. Because I know right now if the money's coming back to the business, we'll probably do it as a donation because uh, we, we don't want people to think that somehow we're profiting off of this. Um, but those those things are going to have to be put in. And I, I think there should be a blanket um, hardship for all the businesses in town to get this, at least get six months down the line. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I just wanted to answer a couple other of the questions that you raised um, in terms of kind of, of how this works. So um, for an annual town meeting, a, a registered voter can create a petition and get 10, 10 signatures. And then when they... Uh, and then they uh, submit it to, to the board and the board is required to put it on the warrant. And so, and with a special town meeting, it's 100 signatures. So you had asked about how this could get changed in the future and the, the answer is that at any town meeting, for a special town meeting, which is our October town meeting, you would need, if it was a citizen's petition, you would need 100 signatures. Um, or you can sort of come and have similar uh, you know, have similar time with the select board to, to have the discussion. So I, I'm just answering your questions. Yes, I just want to point out that we, we're, as business owners in town, we're, we're, we're own business in town. We can't vote. Even though we pay taxes, I get it. We can't vote. So we have to get citizens that are in the town and discuss it with them and have that go forward. So uh, I, I, I do understand how it happened. I also don't know the charter, and I don't know whether how many people left. We know it started at 165 but how many people left at, because it was after midnight, and if there's anything in the charter with the quorum of how many people can actually be there sure. um, when you start with 165 when you get to that. Yep. So that's all I was asking. Yeah, and so, so to answer that question, um, our annual town meeting has a zero quorum requirement. Okay, so. Um, and so how do we go about changing that? That's a similar process. Okay. So it's a town I'll, meeting. I'll, I'll be talking to some that. citizens of Westboro, because um, this can't, I, I, it, these type of things have to really not happen anymore. I mean, this is, we're getting to the point. I think everybody agrees that we need to talk about plastic. We need to, we need to do what's best for the town. But if, if anybody had, if anybody, and that's not to say that this couldn't happen and that we couldn't have done something for paper, but if any meeting had happened 
and any input from a realistic point of view of how it gets implemented and how it gets done at businesses, if any of that had happened, you would have had a more thorough and a more reasonable and probably a, a, a better ballot initiative, um, I shouldn't say ballot initiative, but warrant to go through, that it would have been acceptable by everybody. Cooperation is how you get these things done. Jamming them down everybody's throat is not, and I know you guys didn't do that. I'm just pointing that out. Thank you. Um. So I think um, you know the way that the, the way that the bylaw is written. It's uh, the select board can uh, offer that waiver upon application. So um, I, I hear what you're saying, but I think it's important that you're reaching out as individual businesses to make that application. Um, and so certainly, just a phone call, uh, and we can help you through that process. Um, and then I think also a really important point that we've made a couple times is that this is all subject to review by the Attorney General. Um, and so, you know, if you reach out for that six month uh, waiver, you know, we'll certainly know within that time. You know, we hope to know very soon. We were hoping to know before this meeting, um, but we just haven't received that uh, response yet. So. Dexter Boyce again. Uh, to Ron's point, where's the Chamber of Commerce on this? That's the Business Association in Westboro. Uh, that may be a place to start with for figuring out how to impl uh, implement this, whether there's a six month ex extension needed for individually or for the uh, a blank one for everybody, and as a way to repeal it. The Chamber of Commerce is a lot of Westboro residents. Uh, I would think that they would be on top of this. Now again, I'm a resident. I was a businessman, but that was many, many, many years ago, a long time ago. Uh, we used paper bags, we didn't use plastic way back then. Now they switched from paper to plastic, now back to paper. I still have the problem with the 10 cents, and as Ron pointed out, uh, different size bags, the person that can't afford it. And I, uh, we went grocery shopping today and we had eight paper bags. That's eight times 10, 80 cents, one trip. You do that, three or four times a month, and it, it does build up. And the, some folks in Westboro that use the food pantry, for instance, aren't going to be able to afford the 10 cents for a paper bag time after time after time, regardless of where they get their goods and services. I, I just think it's uh, not a well-thought-out bylaw. Somebody ought to do something to either rescind it altogether or to modify it so that it's more palatable. I mean, the last one wasn't that bad. If you just tweak the definitions a little bit, I think you'd be in good shape. Understand it's a petition. You gotta take it from where it comes. But somebody could have jumped on it and made some amendments at town meeting to, uh, as I say, make it more palatable, if that's the right word. Uh, good job on the presentation, but not a good bylaw, I don't think. I think to address um, you know, one of your points, uh, I think part of the reason why groups that typically might get involved and take stances on proposed bylaws um, were not able to this time around was because um, as this was a citizen's petition, this was also submitted, I think, shortly, very shortly before the warrant for town meeting closed for this past March. And so I think a lot of the groups that would normally weigh in on issues like this um, didn't have the opportunity to do so because of the timing um, in terms of when this was submitted in the process. I think going forward, um, the Economic Development Committee specifically is going to try and do more outreach to businesses when there are bylaws or amendments to bylaws proposed at town meeting or special town meetings that might affect them. And so, you know, we really are, you know, going to try to do a better job um, creating opportunities for businesses uh, to share their point of view and perspective on how, um, you know, any kind of bylaw or amendment might affect them. Thanks. Um, thanks to everyone for their comments as well. Um, I own a small business in town as well. And I guess my question, thanks for the presentation. My question is really about messaging, right? And so what support are we as small business owners or larger business owners going to receive about, should this pass, um, what kind of messaging that are we going to get and help with consistent messaging so that when we encounter a disgruntled consumer, we're able to speak with a consistent voice. Um, and so I think a lot of what we're talking about, right, is collaboration, is um, communication. And so 
I think that would be really helpful moving forward um, because uh, particularly with the second warrant that didn't pass, that's I have a lot of questions about, but I'll, I'll hold off on that. But I think having that consistent communication so that we as business owners are communicating with one voice and have resources coming from the organization that was able to put this forward, um, but then also speaking as a United Westboro. Thank you. I don't know if I needed to state my name or address or anything like town meeting. No. No, okay. <laughs> Oh, and then, sorry, my follow-on follow question is really about the biodegradable plastics um, and when listening sessions for that will be occurring. Um, because there were, going back to the wording of certain things, um, there were certain food retail entities that were clearly omitted from that Warren article. Thank you. You're speaking about the one that didn't pass. Correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. that, that actually is planned to be held in July with the Board of Health. July, okay, perfect. Yeah. So for that second article, as we mentioned, so that was referred back to the Board of Health, and so the Board of Health is planning to hold those listening sessions um, and get feedback. And then I think regarding your question about you know what kind of common messaging or support the town can provide businesses as you know you navigate this change, um, I think you know that's something that we can think about you know how to do and what to do and what kind of solutions um, you know we can provide to you. But I think that's a great point. Um, you know I think. You know, during the COVID-19 pandemic, for example, I know that the Board of Health had supplied businesses with, you know, mask uh, signs um, to help inform and communicate to customers that, you know, Westboro did have a mask mandate at that time. And so, you know, we can look into doing something similar um, or working together as staff to try and create a talk track or something like that um, for events when there are uh, disgruntled customers. Um, you know, I think that's a great point, and thank you for raising that. And, you know, we'll take it into consideration and, and figure out what we can do. And if anyone else has any questions or comments, um, you know, now would be the time. We actually do have to stop uh, precisely at 6 p.m. Uh, so that the uh, uh, school committee can get set up in this room for a meeting thereafter. Thank you. Great. It seems like we're all set. Thank you all for attending, and I hope this uh, clarified any of your questions or concerns. And um, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself, Christy, or Jen um, if you have any further questions or concerns, or if you're viewing and weren't able to ask your question today. Thank you.